Hey, what's up, y'all? What's up? I hope that y'all having a good day. And hopefully today is better than yesterday. And based on the day that you're having, tomorrow looks just a little bit brighter. Let me ask you guys something. Have you ever done something that later you realized you were bugging? That your, your thought process was just kind of backwards and inside out? And then by the time you realized it, it was too late? That's one of the worst feelings, right? What about when your way of thinking affected someone else? The thing that you did hurt the other person. And while you were doing the thing that you were doing, nothing came to mind to tell you no or stop or it's wrong or go back or how is the person gonna feel, right? Um, and then the person finds out in their reaction is one that you would have wished didn't turn out to be that way. Now, what do you do in that circumstance? And how did that person's reaction really affect you? Did it make you say, man, it wasn't worth it, or I was bugging, or I wish I had the way of thinking that I have now, I wish I had it back then. That way I wouldn't have done what I did because it's not worth it. The damage outweighs the enjoyment that I had. One thing we notice is that the greater the person is in your life, the more significant the damage. I don't know if you guys ever noticed that, you know? And we don't wanna hurt anybody, we shouldn't wanna hurt anyone, but the more important that person is to you in your life, and you did something to hurt them, the more significant that damage. And beloved, I wanna ask you guys to hit the like button if you're interested in this topic. And if you're not so interested, hit the dislike button because your opinion matters. It matters to me at least. And I'd love to ask you guys to subscribe and hit that bell so that every time I drop a video, you guys will be notified. Being the fact that that person is so significant or was so significant in your life, their response, their reaction, to what you did it matters a whole deal right a great deal and if they didn't forgive you how did you feel about that right you were crushed but if they did forgive you the weight of that burden of them not forgiving you obviously falls off your shoulders and oof. and i don't know if you guys ever thought about why that person did forgive you you know is it because of who they are? Is it because of who you are? Is it because of what you did? Uh, as far as seeking forgiveness? And you know, most people actually don't know how to sincerely ask for forgiveness, right? And I'm not talking about saying I'm sorry, right? Some people don't know how to apologize too, unfortunately. But some people don't know how to ask for, for forgiveness because that's a very hard thing to do. To go and say, I was wrong, please forgive me. And some people will say, well, what do you want me to forgive you about? You know, what were you wrong about, right? They want you to express the actual thing that they did. So they know that you're not just apologizing just to apologize. You actually mean what you're saying. Right, But to go to someone and ask for forgiveness, it requires a lot. It requires a lot. And most people don't have it in them to do it. But I gather that the more important the person is to you, the more likely you are to go and ask for forgiveness. And, you know, this is the thing, right? So the reality is the greater the offense, the greater the forgiveness has to be. And sometimes... We offend someone so deeply that we feel like we don't have the audacity to ask for forgiveness. We're not worthy of forgiveness, right? We're not worth being forgiven. And sometimes we have to outweigh the two, right? How great of a person is that? <clears throat> How great is that person to me? And that person is so great to me, no matter what I did, it's still worth going to ask for forgiveness. 
or I did something so terrible, no matter how great that person is to me, I, I sh can't have the audacity and I should have the audacity to go to them and ask for forgiveness. But I encourage anyone who's in a position um, of an offense to ask for forgiveness regardless. At least that person will know that you are sorry. Beloved, when something happens, it's a matter of awareness on both parties the offended and the offender. It's a matter of forgiveness, receiving it, giving it, asking for it. And it's a matter of, which we didn't talk about, your repentance, changing the way you think. And that is key. That's key. Because if we're really repentant of what we did, that means we realize, we recognize what we did was wrong and we no longer want to do that. We no longer want to practice that thing, that thing that we once did. We changed our way of thinking and that's what's important. And when we consider the people that we've hurt, the people that we've offended, the people that we've harmed, it's important for us to let them know if we've repented that we have repented. And that, like I said, is key. So even if you're in a relationship, a marriage rather, where you cheated on your spouse, it's necessary to show your spouse that you've repented, that you recognize what you did was wrong, and that you're no longer going to do that and you have no desire to do that. No more, and you don't... It, and you no longer want a desire to do it. And with that in mind, bringing forward an offense in the world of forgiveness and repentance, we also have to consider how we carry ourselves going forward, right? So I wrote this piece with all those things in mind, and I pray that it's a blessing to you. All right, so let's get into it. I was shackled. Ultimately, I received the key of freedom. Once a thief who did not seek it, but was graced a gift. A murderer who did not deserve life, but unto me, life was given. A liar who lived in lies and was brought to the truth. A blind man in motion who was made to see. A reject with no home and no place of possession, now accepted and takes part in belonging. For what I deserve, after what I've done, why would this take place? For what I've been involved in, how could this possibly happen? The Prince of Peace left his throne of paradise, too pure to be among us, and yet he came. Knowing the ruin of my heart, Knowing I would fail him again and again, time after time, I recognize I could not have known love without him. I realize and I also accept I could not have known love without him. I should not have known love when I consider how I have treated my brothers and sisters, how I have acted in jealousy, how I have been motivated by pride. How about how I have misrepresented his name through all of my disgusting habits? I did nothing to deserve this. On the contrary, I did everything possible to ensure what was already solidified in the bedrock of destiny, destruction. Already recompensed, I earned the reward of my sin, death death without any sort of mercy death like a corpse fully embalmed and yet with all its cancerous organs fully intact and malignant i could have been created in this state what decision did i have in experiencing goodness and mercy for i am not creator but created i am not master but servant 
not infinite, but finite. I could have been created to undergo and endure endless pain, pain without the possibility of his presence. Torment could have been my birthplace, my birthplace just because. I mean, before any sin was even committed, but God, God is good, so good. His goodness is also who he is. It's who he is through and through. 1,001 excuses aren't enough to save me or even justify one of my errors. He made me to see this, thankfully. I was found guilty of my sins. He took the blame. My desire was wickedness and iniquity. He stepped out in front. My continual thoughts were cruel and evil. He placed the charge upon himself. What sort of God, what sort of God empties himself and lays aside his glory? He laid aside his glory for my sake and for yours. I was engulfed in the black, inundated in darkness. He called out to me. He called out to me when I was offensive toward him. When my way of thinking and understanding was backward, he called out to me while I was dead and dead wrong. What pretext could there be in dying for me? A brutally graphic, incredibly horrific and sad death at that. What was he trying to gain losing his life? What am I worth? Am I worth this much? No, not at all, but love, love is the reason. Love is the reason he was beaten beyond recognition. Love is the reason he was humiliated and mocked publicly. Love is the reason his body was sacrilegiously massacred. Love is the reason he bled, was broken and abandoned. Love is the reason they shredded his flesh and tried to tear down his spirit. But I am special to him. Not that I am something to be admired, but he in fact is love. It's who he is. Not I, not me, not you, but God. So now, do I continue in my ways? after the living God was battered for me? What is it to bury my pride after the sacrifice of my king? What is it to love my enemies after the defamation of my God? What is it to give with an open heart after the desecration of my savior? What is it to live in peace after the slaughter of the mighty ruler? What is it to live for Jesus when he died and rose again for me. The difficulties of the flesh are real and existent and the battle is great, but I have not been forsaken. I have not been stripped, nor have I been abandoned for war. I have been given the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the good news of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So I am ready now. He loved me so dearly that he did not postpone his love. So I will not postpone my obedience. Give me strength to also extend grace, O Lord, my king, my master, my shelter, my power. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, the bullet points you've seen in this video, I want you to match them to Jesus Christ. The greater the person, the greater the damage. How great is Jesus to you? Therefore, when we offend him, since we've offended him, how great is the damage? And forgiveness comes for a reason. For those of us who are forgiven, why would we forgive him? Share that with those who have not yet received his forgiveness. And those of you who have not been forgiven, why not? 
And lastly, are you worth forgiveness? Are you worth the forgiveness of Jesus Christ? No, we're not worth it. But remember, we're talking about the greatness of a person. So the person of Jesus Christ, the person of the Father, the person of the Holy Spirit, they're so great that they're willing to forgive you and me. All we have to do is receive it, confess our sins, and believe. God bless, beloved. I pray that you make peace with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.